it's in my spirit. Oh, there's no God like Jehovah. 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 There's no God. There's no God like Jehovah. 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 There's no God. There's no God like Jehovah. 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 Come on and clap your hands. Listen, I need you to find somebody and tell them I'm trying to tell you there's no God like Jehovah. Come on, get somebody by the eye and say, Oh, there's no God. There's no God like Jehovah. 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 Oh, there's no God. There's no God like Jehovah. 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 Come on, do it again. There's no God like Jehovah. 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 Come on, everybody, just clap your hands. Come on. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God Right here. I need you to look at somebody and tell them if there is no God like Jehovah, how come you're not really praising him? I dare somebody to yell at somebody in the back and say, neighbor. I need you to do your preaching voice. Say, oh, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. When, I when I think of the goodness of Jesus, Jesus. And, all and all he's done for me, my soul cries out. Hallelujah. Look at somebody else and say, I thank God. For saving me. He could have left me where I was. He could have left me in that crack house. He could have left me in that whole house. He could have left me in the ABC store. He could have left me in that ditch. But I'm so glad that he picked me up. And he tied me up. And he placed my feet. Look at somebody and say, higher ground. Oh, higher ground. Come on, where is the church at? Where is the church at? I'm looking for the sanctified folk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at somebody and say, you don't know my story. All the things that I've been through. You can't feel my pain. What I had to go to get there. 
You'll never understand my praise. Don't try to figure it out. Look at somebody and say, my worship, it is for real. My worship, it is for real. How I lift my hands, I'm not faking. Look at somebody and say, it is, oh, it is. I said it is for real. Yeah. I said it is for real. Yeah, 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 yeah. I said it is for real. I need you to find one more name. Look at your neighbor and say, you didn't pay your bill last week. Oh my God. Look at him and say, you didn't pay your praise bill last week. You backed up two weeks. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. I wonder if you're going to pay your bill today. Look at somebody and say, neighbor. You better not just stand there, but you better praise Listen When Lazarus was in that tomb He was wrapped up in a whole bunch of stuff But look at some neighbor And say neighbor This what you're wrapped up in The Lord said you got the leap out of it you can't be cute in this one. Listen. Come on, my time is up, but I did look to the neighbor and say, neighbor, this is not a Sunday to be cute. It's time to leap. I don't know what the young people say now, but back in my day, when it was time to go, they say, hey, I'm about to bounce. I need you to look at somebody and say, if you're tired of being what you in, it's time to bounce. Oh, some of y'all missing. I dare to take a few leaps, then start, start dancing. Here we go. One more time. Come on, put your hands together.
Come on, put your hands together. Listen, listen. Real friends don't let other friends praise God by themselves. I dare you to look at your friend and say, friend, you going to let me praise him by myself? What kind of friend are you? Yeah! We got to go. But this one's for the real praising. Now look. Now look. I'm going to say this. And I got to get out of the way. But this is for the real praising. You remember that one thing that God did that you knew he just wasn't going to do? You said, Lord, if he was going to do it, you would have been done it by now. But you remember how he did it when he wanted to? In the moment you found out, you hit the floor. I heard the Lord say, if you praise me like that, I'll do it again. Yeah. You better watch yourself. sit right there some of y'all just thought about it We got to get out of here. We got somewhere to go. But look at somebody and say, before we leave, make sure you got enough praise. That's it. Come on, we got to leave. We look at one more neighbor and say, neighbor, the reason why I praise him, because he's been that good. I can't help it. I just got to praise him. And I'm going to praise him. I see the Holy Ghost. We don't need another praise break. What we need is the Holy Ghost. 
We don't need another praise break. What we need is the Holy Ghost. We don't need another praise break. What we need is the Holy Ghost. We don't need another praise break. What we need is the Holy Ghost. Oh, the Holy Ghost. 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 Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Take over. The Holy Ghost. Take over. Holy Ghost. Feel. Holy Ghost. Deliver. Holy Ghost. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I can't help it. It's just the Holy Ghost. And it's like fire shut up in my bones. Fire, I dare to yell, feel me, Lord, feel me. Feel me again. Feel me again, Jesus. Like you did in the Bible days. And suddenly, there was a sound like a mighty rushing wind. And it filled the whole house. Fill the house. Fill the house. Fill the house. Fill Fill every belly. Fill every soul. We need the Holy Ghost. Feel us if we, until we talk right. Feel us until we live right. Feel us until we walk right. Higher. Feel us, Lord. Fill 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 us, Lord. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Come on, lift up your hands all over the house. Yes, sir. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Bless your name. The Holy Spirit is here. He's Thank here you, for God. you right now, whatever you need. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh,
Yes, Lord. Yes, God. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Have your way, God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Have your way, God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Have your way, God. Have your way this morning, God. Yes, Lord. Whatever you want to do, God, do it, God. Yes, Lord. Have your way, God. Yes, Lord. Yes, God. Have your way, God. Yes, Lord. Have your way, God. Yes, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Have your way, God. Yes, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, God. Yes, Lord. Have your way, God. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Have your way, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Have your way, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. The beautiful thing is how God just come in in the midst of a service and do whatever he want to do. Amen. To bless us. Hallelujah. That's the beauty of it. The beauty of holiness. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, just raise your hands. And just say, Lord, I thank you. Come on and praise him. Come on and praise him. He's been good to us. Come on and bless the Lord this morning. Come on. Come on, let's bless him. He's been good to us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Have your way, God, this morning. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, get what you need this morning. Whatever you need is here. It's here now. The Lord is here. So why don't you just lift your hands and get what you need? Hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands. And just get what you need. Reach out to the Lord. To the Lord, here I am. I need you, God. I need you, Jesus. Here I am. Whatever you may be going through, this is your breakthrough time. Hallelujah. Come on. Just bless the Lord. Get whatever you need this morning. Hallelujah. We have time. We have time. Hallelujah. Come on and bless him, saints. Bless the Lord this morning. He's here. He's here. Just bless him. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is all over this place this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Receive my worship. Yes, Lord. Thank you, God. All of my worship. Yes, Lord. Here's my worship. 
all of my worship. Receive my worship. Yes, Lord. All of my worship. And I I will always worship you as long as I am breathing. I will always worship. Come on, worship us. Help me say, and I will. Not be silent. I will always worship you as long as I am breathing. I will always worship. Here's my worship, all of my worship. Receive my worship, all of my worship. Here's my worship, all of my worship. Receive my worship, all of my Can you worship the Lord today? He just wants us to worship him this morning. Amen. Amen. So just worship him. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. He's so good to us. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, God such a good God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It's so important to worship the Lord. Amen. Amen. I realize sometimes we're going through some things, but still we got to worship God. Because, you know, through your worship, you can, the Lord can deliver you from that thing that you're going through. Amen. Hallelujah. So I just worship and praise the Lord this morning for all that he's doing. Amen. In the house of the Lord. He's been so good to us. Praise the Lord. And Hallelujah. I just thank God for how he's just Hallelujah. blessing. Just keep blessing, especially the young people over here, just to see them praising God every Sunday morning and what the Lord is doing in their lives. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We just want to thank God for being here today. Hallelujah. Want to welcome everybody to the house of the Lord today. Amen. I don't see any visitors, but you know what? My son is here today. Stand up, TJ. My baby is here. Amen. All the way from Northern Virginia. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I thank God for my oh, baby yeah. being home. Amen. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. And he'll be moving back home around October, November. Praise all the Lord. Right, all right. All right. Amen. Yeah. Bless the Lord. Amen. Yeah. So excited about that. Yes, sir. Amen. Chef TJ. <laughs> Praise the Lord. He'll be able to come home and cook his mama some meals. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. We thank God for our apostle this morning. 
Amen. And our overseer just walked in along with his first lady, first lady Tracy. Amen. Taylor. And then we have Pastor Charles Sansom and Elder Shigala Sansom here today. We have Pastor Bridget Druid here today. Amen. Inspiration of Hope Ministries. Then we have Elder Rashonda Booty here today. Amen. Praise the Lord. And then we have all the saints, the deacons and the missionaries, the musicians. Amen. We thank God for the musicians. Praise the Lord. Anointed and appointed. Amen. Amen. We just thank God for everybody being in the house of the Lord today. I tell you, God is so good. He is so worthy to be praised. I know we say that all the time, but he is truly worthy to be praised. Amen. Amen. I tell you, we had a good time on last night. We celebrated my other baby, Shay's birthday. 16th, sweet 16th birthday party last night. Amen. Hallelujah. And that's a miracle in itself. As I told y'all that testimony, how the Lord blessed me with that baby. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo, I tell you. I tell you this. I'm going to tell you just a little bit. I tried for a baby for a while <laughs> 10 years and just when I thought I couldn't get a baby a second baby the Lord gave me another baby gave me that miracle amen and it was a little short Filipino doctor that told me you gotta wait on God and God gonna give you a baby that's my baby my miracle praise the Lord Praise the Lord. So that's the testimony. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Well, at this time, it's offering time. Amen. Time for you to be sure enough blessed. Amen. You can prove God. Overseer, you can come on up here. Come on up here. Amen. So go ahead and get ready for your offering. If you need an envelope. Anybody need an envelope? Raise your hand. Okay, if you're ready, please stand and follow the ushers. I said it's going to be all right. I said it's going to be all right. Father, we thank you for this offering, God. Lord, we ask you, Lord, to bless your people because of their obedience and giving, God. Lord, pour out a blessing, Lord, that they don't even have enough room to receive it, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, God. And Lord, even Lord, use it for kingdom building. In your mighty name, God, we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. 
thank you in your liberality of giving. At this time, the apostle is going to come up and introduce the speaker of the hour. Please stand and receive the apostle, Terry D. Williams, Sr. Amen. Amen. Come on, put those hands together. Give the Lord praise this morning. Amen. You may have your seat in the presence of the Lord. Amen. As I hear the music playing. Oh, Lord. It, it seems like, seem like the spirit is just moving right through. Amen. I want to just catch right a hold of it. Amen. Everybody say, I know it's, it's going to be. All right. <laughs> I dare you look at your other neighbors and neighbor. It's going to be. All right. <laughs> All right. I said it's going to be. All right. I said it's going to be. All right. Where my men at? I said it's going to be. <laughs> oh, I hear you, man. Say it again. Where the men at? Come on. Come on, man. Let's get that barrel going. I said it's going to be all right. I said it's going to be all right. Everybody, everybody. I said it's going to be all right. I said it's going to be all right. I dare you take some wings and say, I said it's going to be. All right, we get ready to go somewhere. I said it's gonna be all right. Where my eagles at? I said it's gonna be. Here we go. All right, you're soaring over your problems. You're soaring over your situation. You're soaring. Come on. All right. I see those eagles on. I said it's gonna be. Uh huh. Come on and take your flight this morning. Hey! Woo! Oh, go to the next altitude. I said it's going to be all right. I said it's gonna be. Oh, I see that thing. All right. I'm over it now. I said it's gonna be. All right. Where my tamarine at? Sister Norma. What's it just coming grace us this way? I said it's gonna be. All right. I said it's gonna be. That's Miriam right there. Crossing over the Red Sea. Hey! Hey! <laughs> Woo! Hey! We're crossing over. We're crossing over. And anybody want to come over on the other side? Yes! I'm crossing. I'm crossing. Yeah! Heaven is my view. Yeah! Woo! They crossed over praising God. They crossed over giving God praise. Hey! Uh. And since we crossed over, it's all right. It's it's all right. It's all right to praise him. It's all right to lift him. It's all right to give God what he wants. Woo! Ma 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 ma. Oh, I 
I wish y'all could see what I see. Somehow, some way, God gets the praise. Somehow, some way, they found a praise right where they were sitting. And they declare that this is the day that the Lord has made. Whoa! I got to praise him. I found my praise. I found what I was looking for. Yeah! Yes! The Holy Ghost Yes, sir. Have your way. Woo! Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I got to praise him. I, I got to. I got to. I got to praise him for what he has. Oh! For what the Lord has. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Woo! Come on here. Uh huh. They found the place. They found a way to give God God praise. Yeah! Isaiah said that he was high and lifted up. And his train filled the temple. Praise. I got a reason to give God praise. But Jesus came and grabbed me. He held me close so I wouldn't let it go. Oh, I almost let go. I was riding at the edge of a breakthrough and couldn't see. The devil thought he had me, but Jesus came and grabbed me. He held me close, so I wouldn't let go. I wouldn't let go. I wouldn't let go. I wouldn't let it go. Said I wouldn't let go. I wouldn't let it go. Wouldn't let go. I wouldn't let it go. Oh, I said, hold to his hand. God's unchanging hand. Hold to his hand. God's unchanging hand. Feel your whole soul things eternal. He held me close, so I wouldn't let it go. Hold to his hand. I got some change in hand. Oh, 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 oh. I got some change in hand. Feel 
Turn your hopes for things in eternal. He held me close so I wouldn't let go. Yes, sir. Oh, yes. yourself. him a praise. I owe him a, a Holy Ghost. Show sure enough. Praise. My, 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 my. This is what happens when the saints get together. Amen. Come on, put those hands together. Hallelujah. You may have your seat if you can. Yeah. Somebody said, hold to his hand. God's unchanging hand. Woo! Hey! Make sure you hold to it tight. Because you're getting ready to go somewhere. For so whatever he leads me. I will follow. Look at your neighbor. I bought it. I bought it. Say, neighbor, say, all right, 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 all right. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, we get ready to go. All right, it's all right, 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 <laughs> oh, I hear you, sir. <laughs>
Well, let's see what we got in the house. Maestro. All right. Let's see what the organ has. All right now. Come on, put those hands together. All right, let's, let's put it all together. <laughs> yeah! Where my clappers? Where my tamarind? Where my voice is at? Somebody say hallelujah! lifted all over the building said Lord you're worthy of my praise you are awesome God mighty God to thee I lift my hands and I lift my voice and I yelled glory to your name hallelujah Put those hands together. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You may have your seat if you can. Amen. Truly, I thank God for this morning for all that he is and all that he is doing in this place. Well, I know I'm the only one that sees it. I'm not the only one that bring witness to it. But somehow God is doing some amazing things with these young people. God, I know. Nah, it's one thing when you see the adults praise them. But what do you do when you see your children that's coming behind you and coming up this side of the mountain? And they're praising God already. But see, the Bible says that he inhabits the praises of his people. And he takes the light in his praises. Amen? Amen. Amen. But I know that when there's a praise in the building, that's when he'll come in. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Ah, yes. We're going to move right along. But if you could whisper to your neighbor, say, neighbor, say, ah got a feeling that everything's gonna be all right oh i got a feeling that everything's gonna be all right oh i got a feeling that everything's gonna be all right be all right, be all right, be all right. Come on, Zion, help me sing. Whoa, I said I got a feeling 
I got a feeling, yes sir, everything gonna be all right. Whoa, I got a feeling, hey, everything's gonna be all right. Come on, Zion. Say it like you mean it. Whoa, I said I got a feeling hey, everything's gonna be alright. Whoa, I got a feeling, yeah, everything's gonna be alright. I got a feeling, yeah, everything's gonna be alright. For you listen. Come on. Well, I said down to the years. Oh yes, God's been good. good to me. Oh, down, down to the years. God's been good. God's been good to me. Oh, down, down to the years. God's been good. God's been good to me. Uh, he's been good, he's been good, he's been good. Yeah. I got a double for y'all, listen. Come on. Well, I said all of my life. Oh, yeah. God's been good to me. Oh, 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 all of my life. God's been good. God's been good to me. Oh, oh. Daddy, help me sing. Oh, all of my life, oh, God's been good, God's been good to me. Oh, I'm singing. Oh, all, all of my, my life, life. God's been good. God's been good to me. All of my all life, all of yeah. my life, God's been good. God's been God's good, good to me. He's been good. He's been good. He's been good. Grown up good. He's Trouble in my way. Trouble in my way. I have to cry sometimes. I have to cry sometimes. Oh, so much trouble. trouble in my way. I have to cry sometimes. I have to cry sometimes. A little wake at night. A little wake at night. But that's all right. That's all right. Cause I know Jesus. After a while, after a while, trouble in my way, y'all. Oh. Trouble in Woo. my way. I have to moan sometimes. I have to moan sometimes. Well, so much trouble. Oh, yeah. in my way. I have to moan sometimes. I have to moan sometimes. I lay awake at night. I lay awake at night. But that's all right. Yeah. That's all right. Cause I know Jesus. Stepped in the water, stepped in the water, long time ago, long time ago. Shirak and me shy, Shirak and me shy, a bendigo, and a bendigo, but they won't wear it, y'all. He fixed it for my brother. Yeah. He fixed it for my sister. He will fix it. I know he'll fix it. He will fix it. Cause I know he'll fix it. Jesus will fix it. Jesus will fix it. 
Come on and give God a hand clap of praise. If you know the Lord will fix it for you. Come on and give him some praise in here. If he open any doors for you. If he brought you out of some dangers and harm. Come on, shout glory in here. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I don't know about y'all, but I can't get tired. I can't get tired when it comes down for what God has done for me. Oh, I got a praise on the inside. And it got to come out on the outside. Somebody shout glory in here. Shout hallelujah. Say hallelujah. Glory. Jesus will fix it. Hallelujah. I woke up this morning and had it on my mind. And he said, son, I will fix your situation. Uh, If I brought you from there uh, and I brought you here, uh, that lets me know that I fixed your situation. Uh, Come on and turn to your neighbor. Say, neighbor, Jesus will fix it. Yes, he will. You ain't got to worry about nothing. You ain't got to worry about what the enemy's trying to do. Because the enemy ain't got nothing what God is going to do for you. Come on and look at your neighbor. I bought it. I bought it. Say, Jesus will fix it. Jesus will fix it. Yes, he will. Oh, bless his name. Come on and clap those Holy Ghost hands. Hallelujah. Come on, let's bless his name. I'm glad to be in the house. Hallelujah. Me and my wife woke up early this morning. Hallelujah. We talked to the Lord. Amen. Then I turned on the Facebook Live. Then I seen the lighthouse. Uh And the lighthouse was going in. And I told my wife, uh, I got to make it to the house. Oh, I feel the anointing on me now. Is that all right? I feel God moving, y'all. Because when I got to the house, the Bible tells me that it's peace in the house. It's joy in the house, y'all. It's deliverance in the household. Yeah. Let the church shout yeah. yeah. Shout yeah. yeah. See yeah. 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 Glory. Okay, both shout. Hallelujah. Glory Don't. to God. Yes, oh, we come to bless his name. Hallelujah. I tell you, it's so good to see the young folks praising God. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The devil ain't got nothing That's on not these not young folks. Not, 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 not. Hallelujah. Because they holy ghost yes. feel yes, and fire baptized. Yes. And I'm telling you right now, young folks, y'all keep on giving God praise. Yes, because yes, one thing about it, your breakthrough yes, uh, is in your praise. In your praise. Uh, come on and clap those hands. Oh, yeah. Come on, let's bless God, amen, for his presence and all that he is doing in the lighthouse. Amen. I give an honor and I give an honor to my Lord and Savior. I give an honor to my spiritual father, Apostle Terry D. Williams. I give an honor to my mother, amen, of a prophetess, Felice Williams, and all the pastors and elders are in the house and all of God's children. I'm just excited about Jesus. Because when I look back, Hey, oh my life. And I see where the Lord has brought me. Oh, I got the crowd, y'all. Hallelujah. And I thank God for saving me. Are you, th- are you thanking God for saving you? Hey, hallelujah. I'm going to turn the mic loose. I'm going to turn it loose. Because I know there's a word in the house. God has a word for his people. And we need his word. The word is a keeper, is a healer, and is a deliverer. So take God, take God's word, apply it to your life so he can walk with you and talk with you, minister to your spirit. Amen. Look at these young folks. Hallelujah. I see the glory of the Lord upon their lives. Hallelujah. And I'm telling you something. They going through something in this day and time. So much peer pressure. So much going on in these in these schools and all on these TVs and everything. They're going through something. But you got the whole uh, to God's unchanging hand. Young folks, God is with you. God is with you. It feel good, so good in my spirit. To see y'all that y'all know God for yourself. And thank God for the parents that are teaching you the ways of the Lord. Ah, That's where it started. Glory to God. So I give praise and honor for today for being alive. Amen. Thank God for mother. Thank God for all the ushers. 
all the musicians. I tell you, thank God for you brothers. Y'all play phenomenal. I tell you, pray with the anointing of God. Y'all bring God in. Y'all usher the spirit of the Lord in. And that's what it's all about. Amen. We all coming together and having a good time in the Lord. Amen. I want to thank God for my beautiful wife. Amen. First Lady Tracy Taylor. Amen. Glory to God. So I get praise and honor today. Amen. And I'm going to introduce the speaker. All right. All right. All right. My brother. Amen. From another mother. I love my brother. Amen. He's a God friend man. Amen. He loves his family. He loves his wife and his children. Amen. I give God, I give blessings for over his life. Amen. And I know that he has a word from the Lord. Amen. And I tell you, he's been, he's been serving the Lord a long time. Amen. He's been through some ups and been through some downs. But God has kept him. Amen. Hallelujah. Has kept his mind, kept his body. Amen. Has given the strength. Amen. Ain't it good when you can call on the name of Jesus and he will be there? You ain't got to pick up the phone and call your brother, sister. You can call on God yourself. And he will show up in the nick of time. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And I thank God for my brother. Amen. Pastor Charles Sansom. Amen. Higher Heights Praise Center. Amen. I tell you, my brother, when I was going through my hard times, amen, when I, when I was hurt on my job, my brother would pray for me. We would talk. And he would encourage me and things like that. And he helped me along the way. Amen. Hallelujah. We sharpen iron together. Amen. We, 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 we don't talk as much, but we, we pray a lot. Amen. We pray for one another. Amen. Glory to God. Thank God for his beautiful wife. Amen. Elder Shagela, Sansom, and his daughter. Amen. Rebecca. Amen. Thank God for you as well. Amen. I know God has something for us today. Receive what the Lord is saying. Let the man of God come and bring forth the word with power and anointing. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I know we had a good time and we shouting and thanking God, but it's time for the word. Let's get our mind on the word. Amen. So the word can take control of our minds and our hearts. Amen. Hallelujah. So if you can just stand to your feet as the men of God come, Pastor Charles Sansom, Higher Heights Praise Center. Amen. Put your Holy Ghost hands together for my brother. Amen. Come on, put your hand together for my brother. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Without him, I could do nothing. For without him, I would fail. For without him, my life would be drifting like a ship without a sail. Come on, lift your hands with me. Without him, tell him. I could do nothing. For without him, I would fail. For without him, my life would be drifting like a ship. Without a cell. Come on, lift your hands, tell him yes. Come on, let's worship the Lord. Tell him yes. Hey, Lord, I won't shout. Yes, 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 yeah, Lord. Come on, tell him again. Thank you, Lord. He's been so good. Thank you, Lord. Hey, thank you, Lord. Hey, Lord, I won't stop. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Lord. Come on, just lift it one more time. Say, thank you, Lord. Hey, la la bullshit. Thank you, Lord. 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 Amen. Amen. Let's put our hands together and let's worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Amen. You know, I love shouting. I love running. But sometimes I like to slow it down. Like the dew drops from heaven that falls and takes its time and fall on the trees. See, sometimes when it falls on the trees slow, Sometimes that's when it gets the roots get good because when the rain comes slow and do what it comes to do. See, that's what worship does. Amen. Sometimes you got to slow it down and you got to just shut everything out and just look to the Lord and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, shut your eyes and let's look to the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen, amen. Let's put the hands together and let's worship the Lord. Amen. When I thought about that, I thought about Mama. Y'all know I talk a lot about her. Amen. But it's so good to have a mother that left a legacy. Amen. And I thank God for her. And I don't, y'all may be seated. And I thank God for my mother because my mother was the first that we saw really truly worship the Lord. And, and we would come home from school and I would see my mother. Sometimes her eyes would be red with tears and and I when she would come in and she would be listening to Walter Hawkins and all those back in the day you remember that and mama would just be lifting her hands and what I loved about mama mama could get a worship on washing dishes mama would be putting a load of clothes in and get a worship on because when she heard that dryer go she would hear some some rhythm of the Lord see when you know how to worship God God will let you hear praise in the washing machine amen oh yes he will Yes, he will. Amen, amen. And we used to look at our mama and, and she would tell us, she said, y'all don't understand, but one day you will. And I look at Rashonda a lot and I say, now nah, I get it, mama. <laughs> I get it now Why my mother, and she was a praiser. Amen. Amen. And we honor the Lord for being here today, who's the first of my life and the head of my life. And I honor the Lord, amen, for the apostle, amen, my spiritual father, amen, my spiritual friend, my best friend, amen. You know, I've never had an opportunity to have my leader to be my best friend, amen, and I thank God for him. And I made a promise to him that I would never disrespect him and I would never tread over our friendship lightly, amen, that I would honor him as the man of God, amen. And I thank him, amen, and his lovely wife. Amen. Amen. Our spiritual mother. Amen. Amen. We honor our Apostle Terry Williams. Amen. Of Light of the World International. Amen. 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 And we honor our Prophetess Felice. Amen. And then I would like to honor my brother. Amen. Amen. I just, I mean, this brother, I, I hate to get behind him when he preaches because he can go from zero to 100 in a millisecond. Amen. Amen. I say, put me late. Don't put me next to him. Amen. But I thank God for him and his lovely wife, my sister. Amen. Amen. Sister Tracy. Amen. First lady. And then I, I got to honor. Amen. You know, Pastor Druid. Amen. My sister. Amen. I just love her words of encouragement saying, go on, brother. You're doing good. Amen. And I thank God. Amen. For my sugar plum. Oh, my baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She looking at me, y'all, but I don't care. Amen. I, I stood up one day over 200, 200 people. And God told me, he said, this one right here, in order to get her, you're going to have to stand up in front of 200 people and declare your love and ask her to marry you. And I mean, that was my wife at that time. She was not a person that said, yes, quick. 
So it was a leap of faith. And I said, Lord, I, I got so nervous because it kept getting full of people in the room. And, and I walked in the bathroom and I looked up and I said, God, are you sure about this? I said, well, if she say no, at least I can go back to Maryland and save face. And the Lord said, I told you she's going to say yes. And that night she said yes. Amen. And I thank God, amen, for her. And, uh, and the, the, the thing that I regret is that I didn't marry you sooner. Amen. I thank God for you. Amen. And I love you. Amen. And the Lord. And I thank God for my lovely daughter. Amen. A replica of our love. Amen. I'm admired just to see her mama in her and uh, 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 and me in her. Amen. And I saw her mama's moves on the floor <laughs> yesterday. I said, she didn't take that from me. <laughs> me and Rashonda look. Rashonda say, can she? Oh, she can. I said, that's from Shigala and them. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> amen they were the dancers amen but we thank God and we honor the Lord amen so I could let me come to work amen and I come to do what the Lord has dropped so since we got shouting and all that out of the way amen and we can go before the throne of grace father God in the name of Jesus Lord we thank you and we honor you sir we thank you for always being faithful and always coming in on time. God, we thank you, Lord, for moving me out of the way. And God, for giving me the anointing that makes teaching and preaching easy, Lord. And God, we thank you for it right now. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 Reach over and get your Bibles. Turn with me, amen, to the book of 1 Samuel, amen. We're going to go back there again, amen. The Lord wouldn't release me from 1 Samuel 1, amen. Didn't uh, Elder Rashonda, my sister, didn't she do an awesome job on Thursday, amen. Didn't she teach that thing, amen. Oh, about Hannah, amen. And I was pondering and chewing on that thing, amen, all week long. And the Lord wouldn't release me. I thought I was going to go another way, but the Lord would not allow me to leave that area, amen. So we're going to touch over some points, but that's not all that the Lord has to say, amen. Sister Rashonda, can you go with me, amen? Since she already tread the way, amen, I'm going to let her read for me a little bit, amen, going down memory lane. Amen. First Samuel chapter one, and I want you to read verses one through 11. Amen. We're going to go back and visit that some more. Amen. Read on. Now, there was a certain man, a Ramosim of Mount Ephraim, and his name was Elkanah, the son of Joram, the son of Elihu, the son of Tohu, the son of Zuth and Ephrathah. Uh -huh. And he had two wives. The name of the one was Hannah. And the name of the other, Peninnah. Mm -hmm. And Peninnah had children, but Hannah had no children. Uh -huh. And this man went up out of his city yearly to worship and to sacrifice unto the Lord of hosts in Shiloh. Mm -hmm. And the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, the priest of the Lord, were there. Uh -huh. And when the time was that, Elkanah offered... He gave to Peninnah his wife and to all her sons and her daughters portions. But unto Hannah he gave a worthy portion, for he loved Hannah. But the Lord has shut up her womb. Mm, read on. And her adversary also provoked her sore, for to make her fret. Because the Lord has shut up her womb. And y'all know the sister, you know, Elder Rashonda talked about that, amen, how that the adversary made fun of her, amen, when God shut her womb, amen. And I like how she broke that down, amen, and how that, you know, sometimes the very thing you want, amen, seems like sometimes if you're not careful, it'll make it seem like God is playing with you, amen. Y'all ever been there? And it just seemed like every time you need a car, everybody else is showing up with a car. And you're saying, God, these people don't serve you. They ain't thinking about you. But yet, God, I asked for a car and not, Lord, so I can even take, you know, we try to reason with God, so I can take the neighborhood to church amen and these heathens amen sitting over there ain't even studying you lord and yet they got cars and they'll even drive by and look at you and say how you doing it well where you going you going to church god bless you and ride right on by you amen <laughs> keep on reading amen then said elkna and as he did so year by year when she went up to the house of the lord 
So she provoked her. Therefore, she wept and did not eat. Now, that's messed up when you go to church <laughs> and the saints mess with you. Amen. That's something. When you think that the one place that you can go is the house of God. Amen. And the devil, let me tell you something. The devil will come and sit next to you on that row. Amen. He don't care nothing about you. Sometimes you got to, the devil will talk to you while you worship in the Lord. Amen. And you got to tell him to shut up. Amen. And push right on through. Come on now. Then said Elkna, her husband, to her, Hannah, why weepest thou, and why eatest thou not? And why is thy heart grieved? Am not I better to thee than ten sons? Now, that's something when you, you, you know, have you ever been in a situation where you just couldn't eat? Amen. That thing was so something. See, see, there are some things that God will allow us to get into that will take away your appetite. And one thing I learned, amen, about, amen, as Sister Rashonda was saying, they taught me a long time ago that some things that come out through fasting and prayer. Amen. Come on now. Now, I know we don't like to hear that today, but let me let you in on a little secret that I was told as a boy. Burger King going to still let you have it your way when you come off that fast. Amen. They ain't going to stop making Big Macs. Amen. Just because you went on a fast. Amen. But you got to get to a place and realize that, amen, those two all beef patties, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickled onions on a sesame seed bun can't do what I need God to do. Come on now. Read on. So Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh uh -huh. and after they had drunk. Now, Eli, the priest, sat upon a seat by a post of the temple of the Lord. Ma, 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 ma. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept sore. Mm -hmm. And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thy will indeed look on the affliction of thine handmaid mm. and remember me and not forget thine handmaid, but will give unto thine handmaid a man child. Amen. Then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life, and there shall no razor come upon his head. I mean, she meant some business, amen. Yeah. She meant business with God, amen. And, and it's something when you're, you're talking to God and, 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 and the priests look at you wrong. It, 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 it's something when you're praising God, you got to get to the place. I don't care what nobody think about me. My mother used to sing a song and Big Mama and them used to say, it's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. Not my mama, not my father, not my brother, but it's me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. And we know that in the following verses, as she went to the temple, she prayed so much that her mouth moved. We talked about that, but nothing came out. You ever been hurting where you just couldn't find the right thing to say? And if that wasn't bad enough, we're talking about the man of God thought she was drunk. Now, it's something to come to the house of God with a need, but then the saints get a misunderstanding about you. But it's something when God allows you, you see God pushing her here. See, we got to get to the place when we believe in God for something that we get past people. God knows how to push praise right out of you, to push faith right out of you. If you got to get to the place that you get desperate enough. Well, I don't care what nobody say. I don't care how many times they look at me. But I'm going to pray until something happens. Amen. So the priest began to look at her. And he thought that she was drunk. And he said, put away your mad dog. Put away your vodka. Amen. Put away it. Amen. And she said, Amen. <laughs> she said don't count me as a, a woman of the streets, sir. But I've been pouring out my petition before the Lord. Amen. Amen. And then the man of God said something. He didn't even know what her petition was. But he said, may God grant your petition of what you said. And she believed what the man of God said. And you know what? Some of us, amen, we got to realize that we are wrapped in flesh too. But when you want something from God, she looked past what he had thought about her. And when he said the word of God, she said, I, don't, I can scratch that part out. See, we got to learn how to eat the meat and spit out the bones. And she looked past that and said, but I caught what I want. The man of God said, I'm going to get what I want. Amen. And she picked herself up, 
dried up her tears, put on her some makeup, amen, combed her hair, amen, because God, amen, was going to give her petition. See, sometimes we got to start preparing ourselves for what it is we want God to do. Amen, amen. So, we all know that God granted her and Elkanah their petition. And we know she kept her promise and brought him to the temple for Eli to raise him. Now, Rashonda, skip down with me to the 20 verse, 24th verse through the 28th. And when she had weaned him, uh -huh. she took him up with her with three bullocks and one ephah. Look at her water, keeping her promise. Come on. And a bottle of wine and brought him unto the house of the Lord in Shiloh. You see, it's something here. I can imagine being a mother or, or mm -hmm. a father to be able to not only something that you have wanted so bad, now, she had to be desperate because the average mother want to hold a baby. She want to raise him. But she said, I want him so much, God. I'll give him to you, amen, if I just got to come and see him every so often, God. But I'm going to give him to you. I'm going to put him in your service, amen. Sometimes we got to get desperate enough. God, I'll give you glory. I'll, I'll do whatever you say if you just bless me, amen. She was desperate, amen. Read on. And the child was young. Mm -hmm. And they slew a bullock and brought the child to Eli. And she said, O oh my Lord, as thy soul liveth, my Lord, I am the woman that stood by thee here, praying unto the Lord. For this child I prayed, and the Lord had given me my petition, which I asked of him. Therefore also I have lent him to the Lord. Uh -huh. As long as he liveth, he shall be lent to the Lord. Uh -huh. And he worshiped the Lord there. And he worshiped the Lord there. Amen. Now, we're going to concentrate. Now, we've talked over what you all know already familiar. Amen. But let's go to the, the first Samuel, the second chapter. Amen. I, this is where my thoughts are coming from. I just kind of wanted to, 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 to uh, 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 go over some things. Amen. To bring us up to where we are right now. First Samuel chapter two. Amen. And we're going to read verse 11. And I want you to go down to verse 18. Uh, Elder Rashonda. Read on. And, and Elkna went to Ramah. Uh -huh. To his house. And the child did minister unto the Lord before Eli the priest. We're going to concentrate. He ministered. What she asked God, he ministered before the Lord. Come on. Now the sons of Eli. We won't concentrate on them. Go ahead. Now the sons of Eli were sons of Belial. In other words, they were scoundrels. Amen. Come on. They knew not the Lord. Uh-huh. And the priest's custom with the people was. That when now, any, now, 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 it's messed up when you're in church mm -hmm. and it says that you're a scoundrel in church. See, you see, God put that in there because people say, I ain't going to church because there are hypocrites in the church. There was one right here with priests. But Samuel still did what he was supposed to. Amen. That did not. See, some of us, we can't be blessed because we're too busy looking at scoundrels in the church. Right, right. Amen. People, you know, everybody come to church ain't saved. Right. We need to get past that. Amen. amen. And get what you came out. Amen. Yeah. Read on. And the priest's custom with the people was that when any man offered sacrifice. My Lord. The priest's servant came while the flesh was in seething mm. with a flesh book of three teeth in his hand. Mm. And he struck it into the pan or kettle or cauldron or pot. All that the flesh hook brought up, the priest took for himself. Uh -huh. So they did in Shiloh until all the Israelites that came hither. Now, hither. there was a certain way that God had said he wanted it done. Amen. When the meat was boiling and whatever came up, the priest had. So that was something instituted by God. You get what comes up. Amen. But look what they did. These scoundrels. Amen. Come on. Also, before they burnt the fat. The priest's servant came and said to the man that sacrificed, give flesh to roast mm. for the priest, for he will not have sodden flesh of thee, but raw. You see here, I want to do it my way. Amen. You know, I, I know it's supposed to come up bald, but I, I want to have some chopped steaks with it. Amen. Put 
put a little mashed potatoes on the side. I got my agenda, amen. How many of us, amen, that God has his agenda, but we get away from God's agenda and we look at the things of God, amen, about us. It is not about us, amen. It ain't about the mashed potatoes on there with it. It ain't about you frying it with bacon and all of that and bacon grease. Y'all know I like to cook, amen. <laughs> amen. They, had, they probably was cooks because they probably said we can fillet that bad boy, make some cute steaks out of it and all of that but that's wasn't it what it was done for amen yeah, amen <laughs> come on and if any man said unto him let them not fail to burn the fat presently and then take as much as thy soul desire it then he would answer him nay but thy shalt give me give it me now and if not i will take it by look force. at this they tell me i'm gonna take it either you gonna give it to me or i'm gonna take it they was bold Amen. In the house of God. Amen. How many times we see people bold in the house of God. Amen. And you look around. See, the reason I'm breaking this down, we got to get past people. Amen. And realize what you were sent to the house of God to do. Amen. So many people stay home today because they're, they're allowing themselves, amen, to be cheated out of the things that God have because they're so busy looking at what scoundrels and other people do. But I made up in my mind, I don't care what nobody say. I don't care if nobody lives holy. Yeah. I'm going to live holy. Amen. Amen. amen, because we got to realize that you got to make it for yourself. Amen, amen. 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 Come on now. Wherefore, the sin of the young men was very great before mm. the Lord, for men abhorred the offering of the Lord. But Samuel ministered mm. before the Lord, being a child, girded with a linen epoch. He did what he was supposed to do. In spite of what they did, he still did what he was supposed to do. Amen. Amen. Come on. Amen. Each year, verse 19. Moreover, his mother made him a little coat. And brought it to him from year to year. When she came up with her husband to offer the yearly sacrifice. And Eli blessed Elkna and his wife and said, The Lord give thee seed of this woman for the loan which is lent to the Lord. Skip down to verse 22. Now Eli was very old. Now he had gotten old, y'all. And heard all that his sons did unto all Israel. Amen. Now, y'all heard about Samuel. Now, let, let, let's visit them a little bit. Amen. Now, what did he hear? And how they lay with the women that assembled at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. Now, they got people laying with at the, 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 the door of the tabernacle. Now, amen. 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 And, and, and we call them, uh, uh, they say they in the kingdom. And, 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 and that, that back in those days, they were still doing it. Amen. They were just giving it up for the kingdom, they said. Amen. But this thing, amen, was in, amen, back then. And y'all act like it's something new now. See, he's showing us this. Sometimes you got to just really look at what the word of God says. Amen. We still got temple holes. Amen. Come on now. Can I just level with you? Oh, yeah, we do. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm going to take it. Can, can, can I just be honest with you? Now, I learned as a minister, a young minister. I remember one time, Pastor, can I just keep it real? I was sitting as a single man. Amen. And they taught us as brothers. Amen. In the pulpit, they told us, amen, when you see something, amen, look down. Amen. And I seen a particular sister. Amen. And she sat there. Amen. And all of a sudden, she saw me watching. And I was just saying, God bless you. And all of a sudden, this came wide open. I said, oh, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. So then I went over to the other side. I said, Bishop, can I sit over there? He said, sure. Then the other sister went like like this I said oh Lord then one sister got on the altar and she said praise him praise him praise him and all this was just and I said my Lord amen and I just had to praise him with my eyes closed <laughs> come on now we might as well level some of this stuff amen ain't nothing but the devil trying to pull you away some of you come in the church some sisters amen and we gonna get on the brothers I ain't offer you either come to church with some of this stuff to bait people in they got this stuff amen and and you know sometimes they'll drag i had one sister would pull me up so close to her bosom i said oh lord that ain't no holy hug amen and she would hold me stern i said oh jesus so i would go around she would look for me 
Now, I saw times even, amen, when brothers. Now, it's messed up, amen. Now, come on now. You know good and well we used to make fun of Pee Wee Herman back in the days. And now all of them wearing it now. Now, when you're getting up praising the Lord, and I can see all this, amen, and women can look and through all that, that's too tight. Now, what you doing wearing something and you know good and well that your little kid brother in the kindergarten should be wearing that on his chest? But yet we wear certain things and we bring it to church. And then we think we're honoring God and get mad when people say something about it. But God is still calling for holiness. Amen. I don't know how I got off on that. <laughs> oh, well. We got to bring holiness back into the house of God. We got to learn how to live right and live holy and stop getting with everything that's in the world. And then you sit here and then you walk around and then I've seen sisters, amen, dresses so all the way up here. Got that slit up here. And then they got it and then they, brother, can you? Now, first of all, you shouldn't have it on that tight. You walking in like this. They tell you to run around the church. You going like. Come on now. That's too tight. And brothers trying to pray. It's already hard enough. And God that made you sisters so beautifully. And wonderfully made. Hey man. He know how to put the curves right where they need to be. Come on brothers. He knew how to make you 36. 24, 36. He knew what he was doing, but some of you are exploiting all that God gave you. Now, if everybody know what you're wearing and can see you under your clothes, then what is there for the wedding night? Some of you, amen, bend over and people can see what you had for dinner last night. Something's wrong with that. But what I'm saying to you is this is something that happened back then. But you see, he still ministered like God told him to. You better learn how to take your eyes off of people. And if you got to come to church and praise him with your eyes closed, keep on doing it. All right. Now let's get back to where we were. Elder Rashonda, help me, Lord. All right, go ahead. Now it says Eli was very old. And he what? And heard all that his sons did unto all Israel. Uh -huh. And how they lay with the women that assembled at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. Can't even come in the house of God right. Meeting you right there at the door. Making it convenient for you. Amen. Mm -hmm. Come on now. And he said unto them, why do ye such things? For I hear of your evil dealings mm. by all these people. Wow. Nay. My sons, for it is no good report that I hear. You make the Lord's people to transgress. You see that? He's causing them to transgress. Come on. If one man sin against another, the judge shall judge him. Uh-huh. But if a man sin against the Lord, who shall entreat for him? See, it's one thing to ask, you know, if you mess up with your brother. But you mess up with God. I heard my bishop tell me a long time ago, he said a man came to his door and he said, I need you to pray for me. He said, what's wrong? He said, God has cursed me. He said, man, get away from my door. <laughs> if God curse you, I can't help you. Uh -uh, you ain't bringing bad luck up in here. Get away from my door. <laughs> amen. But we got to learn, amen, to fear God. Amen. amen. Now, what does verse 26 say? And the child Samuel grew on. And was in favor both with the Lord and also see, with men. Y'all it, see, it didn't even stop anything. Mm -hmm. See, no matter what people do, God has already got people in place that's going to live right. Amen. See, we got to learn sometime to say, God, just show me the ones that are living right. Amen. I don't care in this thing. It's an individual affair. You got to learn how sometime to change your seat. Yeah. You got to learn sometime if they gossiping over here, then I just sit by myself. But you got to learn how to wrestle this thing. You got to learn how a man that what I need, a man. See, there's nobody standing in the need but me. Amen. amen. Now, the word of the Lord came. And the man of God said in verse 27, and I'm reading it in the NIV. 
He said, he came to Eli and he said, this is what the Lord says. Did I not clearly reveal myself to your ancestors' family when they were in Egypt under Pharaoh? I chose your ancestors out of all the tribes of Israel to be my priest. Now, that reminds me of mama when she said, see, I'm getting ready to get you for what you did, see. See, I, I told you I was going to get you last week, but you did this, this, and this. So God is giving them, amen, the sentence. And he said, I chose your ancestors out of all the tribes of Israel to be my priests, to go up to my altar, to burn incense, to wear an ephod in my presence. I also gave your ancestors' families all the food offerings presented by the Israelites. Then God asked him, he said, why do you scorn my sacrifice and offerings that I prescribe for my dwelling? Why do you honor your sons more than me by fattening yourselves on the choice parts of every offering made by my people Israel. Therefore, the Lord God of Israel declares, I promise that members of your family would minister before me forever. But now the Lord declares, far be it from me. Those who honor me, I'm going to honor them. But those who despise me will be disdained. The time is coming when I will cut short your strength and the strength of your priestly house so that no one in it will reach old age. Amen. And you will see distress in my dwelling. Although good will be done to Israel, no one in your family line will ever reach old age. Amen. Amen. Every one of you that I do not cut off from the serving at my altar, I will spare only to destroy your sight and sap your strength. And all your descendants will die in the prime of their life. Now this is the part I'm going to concentrate on. And what happens to your two sons, Hophni and Phineas, will be assigned to you. They will both die on the same day. I will raise up for myself a faithful priest who will do according to that what is in my heart and mine. I will firmly establish his priestly house and they will minister before my anointing one always. Now, in the third chapter of 2 Samuel, it tells us that Eli, the priest, got older. His eyes were so bad that he could barely see. And they were all laid down fast asleep in the house of the Lord, where the ark of God was and the lamp of, uh, uh, the, lamp of the Lord had not yet went out. So it was late while little Samuel was asleep. The Lord began to call him Samuel. Samuel. He got up. Because, see, he didn't know what the word of God was then. Because the word of God, it had been hundreds of years since anybody had heard the word of God. Then it says, God said, Samuel, Samuel. He got up and he ran to the old man. And he said, here I am. You called me. Eli told him, I didn't call you. Go back and lay down, boy. God came and began to call his name again. Samuel, Samuel. Little Samuel jumped back up out of his sleep and ran to the old man. Here I am, he said. You did call me. The old priest Eli said, go back and lay down. I didn't call you. The old priest Eli said, go back and lay down. The third time the Lord called Samuel. Samuel. Samuel jumped up again and ran with his little feet and said, you did call me. Samuel jumped up. By this time, the old priest perceived that it was God that was calling the boy and told him that the next time you hear it, say, speak, Lord, for thy servant hear it. The last time God came, the Bible says, and he stood there as times before. And he said, Samuel, Samuel. And the little Samuel said, speak, Lord, for thy servant hear it. And God told him these words. And the Lord said to Samuel, see, I'm about to do something in Israel. That will make the ears of everyone who hears about it tingle. At that time, I will carry out against Eli everything I spoke against his family from beginning to end. For I told him that I would judge his family forever because of the sin he knew about. His sons blasphemed God and he failed to restrain them. Therefore, I swore to the house of Eli, the guilt of Eli's house will never be atoned by sacrifice or offering. That's saying something. Samuel laid down into the morning and was scared 
to tell the old man. And the old man said, well, what did God say to you? And he kind of was nervous. He said, you better tell me. If you don't tell me, he said, may God do to you. And then little Samuel looked at him and said, we got to talk. <laughs> Amen. Well, since you put it like that, we got to talk. Because when he stood over me, he meant business. Amen. Then verse 19 said, the Lord was with Samuel as he grew up. And he let none of his words fall to the ground. Now, I know this may have been a little lengthy, but my topic is look at your neighbor and tell him these words. See you at the crossroads. See you at the crossroads. As I was contemplating on what to say here today, the Lord took my mind back to a song that I had heard. Now, some of y'all young ones don't remember this, but it was back in the early 90s by a group called Bones, Thugs, and Harmony. How many of y'all remember them? Back in the days, that's, a, <laughs> that's something, amen. I'm taking it back, ain't a pastor. And they would sing it, and they said, see you at the crossroads. And I began, God began to let that thing, amen. Now, now I was saved, but you know, I wasn't fully committed back <laughs> I did listen to a little bit of something, something, amen. And I remember in the video, I went back and I was looking at it this morning because the Lord wouldn't allow that to leave my mind. And they were talking about how the different people were sitting around and doing things and the death angel would come and he would take them right out. He took a baby right out of the crib. They was in a funeral service and he took the soul right out. People were playing cards and dominoes down the street doing things and death came and took them. Amen. Look at your neighbor say, see ya. At the crossroads. Now the crossroads, according to the dictionary, is an intersection of two or more roads. It's a point at which a crucial decision must be made that will far-reach consequences. Amen? That will have far-reaching consequences. It is a road that's crossed a main road or joins two main roads. Look at your neighbor say, see ya at the crossroads. It's even a bottleneck. Where all roads meet. And people say a lot, amen, that all roads lead to God. Oh, yeah, really they do. Because I don't care what you're doing. You can be Buddha. Amen. You can do all kinds of things. But the Bible says that every knee shall bow. And every tongue shall confess. So I don't care what you is one day, baby. You're coming to the crossroad. Look at him and say, see ya at the crossroad. Now, we live in a world where people have been given the false illusion that they are living for themselves. But my Bible tells me in Acts chapter 17, verse 28, in him we live and move and have our being. It also tells me that in Proverbs 9 and 10, that the beginning of all wisdom is to fear the Lord. We live in a time where people seem to have forgotten the fear of the Lord. They seem to have divorced themselves away from the word of God as if that will make it of none effect. But my Bible tells me that in Matthew 10 and 28, let me tell you who to fear. It says, but fear not those which can kill the body, but after that they can do nothing. But he said, let me tell you who you better be afraid of. That can destroy, you better be afraid of the one that can destroy both body and soul in hell. See, people say, I ain't afraid to die. Let me let you in on something. That's because you ain't died yet, boo-boo. You ain't died yet. Yeah, I ain't afraid. I'll take a bullet. Okay, well, then go ahead and take it. <laughs> you can go ahead of me in the line. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Now, I, I, I love the Lord. I really do, but I ain't trying to meet him right now. <laughs> Amen. Amen. The Bible says that, 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 that you know, I, I think about everybody want to go to heaven, but don't nobody want to die to get there. Amen. Now, now, I remember, and, and, and I'm going to wrap it on up. I remember a story. Can I just tell you this? Of a little boy that sat there in church, and the pastor was preaching. And he said, and he would preach in his fiery voice. He said, mm, how many of you out there love the Lord? If you love him, shout yes. And everybody said, yeah. He said, mm, I don't believe you heard me, but if you love the Lord, shout yes. Everybody say yes. He said, yes. They said, yes. Mm. He said, I got one more thing. How many of you want to meet the Lord? And little Jimmy was sitting there on the road looking. He said, if you want to meet Jesus, say yeah. Everybody say yeah. Little Jimmy sat there and looked at him. 
He said, mm, I don't think you got the story. He said, how many of you want to meet Jesus? Say, yeah. Everybody said, yeah. They were jumping over the rosters. And Jimmy just looked. So he came to Jimmy. He said, Jimmy, can I ask you a question? He said, now, why is it? Now, now, when I said everybody that loved the Lord shall yes, he said, and everybody said yes, and you said yes. He said, yes, sir. He said, but what troubles me is when I said, how many of you want to meet Jesus? Why did you just sit there? He said, well, he said, well, sir, I wasn't trying to meet him today. <laughs> see, everybody want to see the Lord and they love him, but they ain't trying to die to get there. Now, in Hebrews 10 and 31 tells us that it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God. This generation has tried to create a toothless gospel that don't have any bite in it anymore. That God is a God of love and he don't have any requirements in his house. You can do what you want to do. Live what you want. And don't anybody say anything or there's going to be an issue. It seems that the word Christian is very popular today. People can wear that name with no conviction. You can see them on award shows. And they came in half naked and just cut an album that was all type of cussing on it and degrading our women. And then they stand up and say, if it had not been for the Lord that blessed me with this album, shut your lying lips. <laughs> but my Bible tells me, so what if they don't believe? Does it make the word of God of non effect? Look at your neighbor and say, see you at the crossroads. We've got some crucial decisions to make. When I look at these chapters, I see four types of people. I see the first, which is Elkanah and Hannah. They served God faithfully and dedicated their precious baby to the Lord. And they didn't deviate from their plan. Look at your neighbor and say, whatever you do, don't deviate from the plan. Then the second type of people we have is little Samuel that walked out the plan. Amen. So not only, amen, don't deviate it, but walk it out. Amen. Look at your neighbor say, walk it out. The third set of people we see is Hophni and Phineas that was in the church but didn't fear God. Amen. Then we have the fourth, Eli, that was supposed to be the priest, but look the other way. And let his sons do evil in the house of the Lord. Now like Hannah and Elkanah, we have to remember that our children don't belong to us. But they belong to us by God. Psalms 127 and 3 tells us, Lo, children are in heritage by the Lord. And the fruit of the wombs is his reward. Deuteronomy 6 and 6 through 7 says, And these words which I command thee, telling your parents, shall be in your heart. Thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house and when thou walkest by the way and when thou liest down and when thou risest up. Amen. I thank God I had a mama that talked about God all the time. Amen. She talked about him when she was washing clothes. She talked about him doing dishes. When we were riding down the highway, she was talking about him. On the way to church, I remember, I know Rashonda remember this. She said, y'all keep living these ranchy lives if y'all want to. But I'm going to tell you, if the rapture take place, y'all better learn how to drive this car. Because <laughs> I'm going to take off, and if you don't know how to drive the car, you're in trouble. Amen. <laughs> so when mama would get behind the car, I said, oh, Lord, have I done anything, Lord? Anything, Lord. <laughs> Just make sure I make the rapture. One time I got scared, mama had went away. I went around, I said, oh, Lord, I must have missed the rapture. Mama was outside praying. I said, thank you, Lord. <laughs> they put some fear in you back then. Yes, they did. Proverbs 22 and 6 says, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart. Parents, we've got work to do. You can't expect to leave them to themselves and expect them to grow up to be God-fearing citizens. Come on now. We can't expect not to be involved in their lives and them to come out right. We've got to train them. Look at your neighbor and say, we've got to train them. You better look at your neighbor and say, follow through on it. Now, like Samuel, young people, I want to talk to you. You're going to have to make a decision that if you're going to live for God, live for God. You can't have the world. 
You can't have the world and live for God. You too have to make a conscientious decision that if I want God to use me, I have to stand with God even if it comes at a price of my popularity or if it costs me my friends. A lot of times we don't want to hear that because we want to be popular and we want to be liked. But the Bible still says if you seek to save your life, you're going to lose it. And if you lose your life for his sake, you're going to find it. That means if you're thinking about pleasing man, amen, thinking about what they say about you, thinking about them not getting mad at you, amen, it says that if you seek to save your life, you're going to lose it. And no matter what my peers may say, I'd rather have them mad at me than God mad at me. Face it, sometimes serving God is going to bring you at odds with the world we live in. You better look at the Hebrew boys. You better look at how they stand. And history said they were somewhere around 14. Now you can imagine all the other peers were doing their thing, but something in them wouldn't let them bow. And we've got to have a resolve. If I'm the only one standing, I'm going to stand. I'm sure people around them said, well, are we asking for you to bow? I ain't bowing. I ain't bowing my head. I ain't looking down. I, my head is up. And Psalms 121 and 1 says, I will lift my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. We got to get bold. Now, we can be bold and shouting in the church, bold and running around the church. Now, God wants us to get bold, amen, in living for him outside. See, this is the place of comfort in here. But where the true test is, is when you stand, amen, and nobody in your circle is living safe. I remember one time I was standing around, amen, and see, God looks at those times that we have small compromises. And I was standing on the... Uh, um, bus stop and all my friends started passing weed around now I don't know who got it but they were going around and before it got to me I started thinking I said now this can go a certain way now I'm going to have to make a decision quick because it's coming my way and it kept coming around and I said well first of all if my mother find out she's going to beat me to death <laughs> and God talks to mama <laughs> they got a relationship they like here so, but second of all, I don't want to mess up my testimony. So they passed it to me. And I said, no, nah, man, I'm sorry. I can't do that, dog. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm sorry. I can't do that. Oh, man, what's wrong? You scared of your mama? I said, actually, I am. <laughs> can we just keep it the truth? <laughs> Y'all don't live with Pastor Sam. That woman crazy. I'm telling you, my mother was a saved thug. <laughs> she was a sanctified thug. Hey, Amen. She would knock you in the floor. <laughs> Amen. And make you call on Jesus. <laughs> My brother fell out in the floor. He said, I'm dying. I'm dying. She said, then die, then die, die. I said, that woman crazy. <laughs> I said, actually, I am. And I didn't care what they said. You a sissy will call it. I ain't doing it. I had to have a resolve. Hey Amen. I did. You're going to have to come to the place. If they talk about you, you're still going to stand because they're going to talk about you. But you got to have a resolve inside of you that I'm going to live holy no matter what. Amen. Now, we've got some crucial decisions to make. Then we have the third class classification, Hophni and Phineas. They forgot what was sacred. Even in life, we all know that sometimes sacred things are set apart as something we see in the church. For example, you don't serve potluck dinners on the communion plates, do you? We even have signs in the church that said no eating in the sanctuary. The pulpit is supposed to be sacred. Now we live in a time people know we were scared to come to the pulpit. And people would come up in here and know they just slept around last night and get up and sing a solo. But back in them days when I came up and I know you ain't too you younger than me. And you remember days they would look at you in them eyes you just sit down. We had a mother in California. Kids was up jumping. She looked at one of them she said. Sit on down, and you saw him. Don't even try to play it off, son. You already know you got openly rebuked by mama. She said, sit down. And the saints back then could look at you, and they could look at the way you shout. They did. They spent time with God. I don't know about these saints. People can do all kinds of things, and they don't see nothing. But the saints back then could look right through you. And you'd be shouting, and mother walk up to you and grab your hand like a man. And she said, you're living right. Oh, who? She said, you're living right, son? Yes, ma'am. Look at me, boy, when I'm talking to you. 
Are you living holy? Yes, ma'am. You start repenting and everything, even though you know you didn't do nothing. But stuff has to come back to being sacred. We have to teach our children that the house of God is sacred. And so many times we are raising up Hophneys and Phineases in the house of God and don't even realize it. Come on now. The pulpit is a sacred place and shouldn't be taken lightly. Uh-huh. Now what I thought about them and Samuel. And let me just get back. Okay, Holy Ghost. We live in a day now where preachers using the pulpit, singing all kinds of R&B songs in the pulpit. Doing all kinds of things. We got to know that this stuff is sacred. We got to, amen, and musicians, pastors. We got to remember that when we come, we have a charge to keep and a God to glorify. But we know sometimes when we don't check ourselves and we're playing in the house of God. You see it all over where it becomes a gig. Now, I know our musicians aren't like that. But if this is just a gig for you, don't you realize that you are supposed to be playing the spirit of God down? That the spirit of God ushers into you? And if people are, and God is not going to continue to keep playing with a lot of us. People will fall dead in the pulpits. But they don't think because they haven't seen it in a while. Now I'm not calling any names. But Apostle and I, we've witnessed, amen, God taking someone out of here that took God's pulpit not serious. And God said, I took him out of here. I was like, well, I'm not arguing with you, Lord. It's like he was like, and you want some of this? No, sir, I don't want y'all. Y'all remember how mama said, you want some of this whooping? God said, you want some of this? Well, you can join them too. I'm, no, no, sir. Amen. May the Lord watch between me and them. Amen. <laughs> amen. See him on the, see him at the crossroad. <laughs> amen. But think about this. They had the same pastor set under the same teacher and they were supposed to be preachers like Samuel but both chose different paths. This tells me that you can be in church shouting, jumping, running around the church looking all churchy on your way to hell. It ain't good enough. It has to be a hard issue. It is good to be brought back up in church but it can, it's good to be brought up in church but sometimes it can have its downsides. Now, 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 think about it. You can become so used to the word. You can be so used to the church lingo, so used to how things are done, that your heart become cold. And you lose the fear of God. Even our musicians, like I said, amen. All of us preachers have to shake ourselves every now and then and say, Lord, do it again. Lord, save me again. Help me to remember, Lord, why you put me in this office in the first place. I know we don't like to hear that kind of preaching. But I'd rather correct you. Than God correct you. Because when God correct you. Let me tell you something. Amen. He got a way of doing it. And sometimes God will correct you in private. Before he do public. But some of us keep going on. And going on. God say either you fix it. Or I'm going to fix it for you. And we keep on. And when God do it. Then we look like a chicken with his head cut off. A deer caught in headlights. I bet you every one of the preachers and people that God dealt with, he dealt with them in private first. So if he's dealing with you, you better get it right because you don't want him to fix it for you. Amen? Amen. Now, you realize we live in a time where the, the gospel, they're trying to say that, that, that God is a God of love. He won't kill you. You may say you are scaring people. That was just the Old, te Old Testament. Let me tell you something. <laughs> you better talk about Ananias and Sapphira in the New Testament, Acts chapter 5. You better talk about King Herod that was eaten up by worms in Acts chapter 12. That's in the New Testament. People are preaching this toothless gospel where all they want to talk about is prosperity and feel good and forget to realize that God is nothing to be played with. God told the Israelites in Deuteronomy 28, he said, the same way I rejoice to bless you and prosper you, I'll rejoice to kill you. He said it in Deuteronomy 28. Check your Bible. He said, while you running around and I'm blessing you with cause, I'll bless you right out of here. We've got to bring back fear in the church. 
We've got to remember that we are, if we're not careful, we will become Hophneys and Phineases, amen, instead of Samuel. God is looking for Samuels, amen, that is going to stand up and hold up the bloodstained banner. I'm, I'm wrapping it up. Hear me and hear me well. We can't get the lines crossed. We can't expect to be used like Samuel, living like Eli's two sons. We can't expect to be used like Samuel, living like Eli's two sons. Look at your neighbor say, see you at the crossroads. We've got some crucial decisions to make. And last but not least, the last category is Eli. Now let me speak to the parents and even the church leaders. We especially got a job to do. You can't bring them up in church and look the other way. You have a responsibility. You have to correct them, even if it means snatching them down. I remember back in the day, my mother would tell us, hey, man, she, if you wasn't living right and you going to bring your little happy. I had one little brother now. He, he going to get me for this. And he want to go to the communion table. Mama say, boy, I love you too much to let God strike you dead. Sit your tail down. Then he would just sit down. If I catch you going up there knowing you causing all kind of cane in the house. And my brother would always, every time they preached about hellfire, he would run to the altar. Mama told him, I'm tired of you playing with God. Run down there one more time. She said, I'm going to run down there with you and beat you all the way back in front of all these people. And my brother and my mother would do it. I told you she was a thug, hey man. And she would do it. And my mother didn't make idle threats, but she put the fear of God down in us. She didn't let you. Sometimes you know your kids ain't living right, and you letting them up here sing. We come this far by faith. Sit your lion tail down. We got to love them enough to sit them down if they ain't right. Sit them down till they get it correct. But we'll let them go on doing things because we don't want to hurt their feelings. And you see God wiped them all out in one day. He said, I'm going to deal with you. And I'm going to deal with your kids. He took the kids out, amen, and he took the daddy out too. And, that, and if he did it then, he can do it again. So I want to encourage you. You better make your mind up. We all come to a crossroad. We have to make a decision what we're going to do. We're either going to live for God or not. We're going to have to make up in our mind if I'm going to be young, it's got to be more than running around the church. It's got to be more than shouting and falling out. I got to live this thing on my job. I got to live this thing in school if they talk about me. If I'm bold enough to walk around the church, I ought to be bold enough to stand up and say, for God I live and for God I die. But we want to shrink back because we don't want to be popular. We want, we want to be popular. We, we, we want to be liked. But my mother always told me that he sits high and he looks low. See, it ain't Pastor Terry that you got to worry about. It ain't First Lady Felice that you got to worry about. It's that all-seeing eye that's watching what you do. And you know what? He knows your real motives. Amen. He see you compromising. Well, I'm just going to do this just this one time. Uh-huh. He sees it. And you know what? If you be ashamed of him, he's going to be ashamed of you. I can go on, but I'm going to stop right there. We have, and the reason why God gave me crossroads is because everything got to come to a bottleneck. Everything got to come to a decision where either, as they used to say, and I'm going to clean it up, amen, either you're going to sit on the toilet or get off. You're going to either make up your mind whether you're going to live right or stop playing. We've got to realize that this is life and death. We are playing with people's souls. God has redeemed us. And we're going to play with it. He gave his life for us. And we're going to just take it and play with it. We are playing with men's souls. Because while we're out there compromising. Instead of holding up the bloodstained banner. Some of our peers. Can die and go to hell. Then we stand at the coffin crying. And you was the very one compromising. And wouldn't tell them about Jesus. You better learn how to stand. And their blood going to be required on your hands. We've got work to do. See you at the crossroads. Everyone standing. I know this wasn't a shouting message. But we have to get serious about the things of God. We got to realize that we are going to live for God. That our Lord, you mean more to me than even if my mama don't go. You know the Bible said, save yourself from this untoward generation. 
That means if my brother don't go, oh well. And see, I want you to have the kind of conviction. I heard a preacher say this. If there's only 12 slots in heaven, well, I guess it's 11 need to be full because uh, who going with me? Because I know I'm going. I may miss you, but if you don't make that 11, I may cry a little bit, but after a while, I'm going to shout troubles over. I believe you, boo-boo, you ain't that popular or that much to me in my life where I, where I miss heaven. And believe you me, God is calling us in this generation. Y'all don't see where stuff is happening in Ukraine? If one of those bullet, one of those missiles just go a little bit over in the NATO, all of us will be at war. Don't y'all realize we're in critical times? But God